Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are discussing about schwannoma. Schwannoma, also known as neuromas or neurinomas of verruche and neurilamomas. They are benign, well encapsulated, slow growing nerve sheath tumors composed of exclusively of schwann cells. What are schwann cells? Schwann cells protect and support the nerve cells of nervous system. The tumor can originate from any myelinated central or peripheral nerve with Schwann cells. The WHO classified schwannoma as a grade 1 benign tumor. Schwannoma is the most common type of peripheral nerve tumors in adults. Certain genetic conditions like schwannomatosis, neurofibromatosis type 2 and kearney complexes are associated with multiple schwannomas. The cause is the loss of function of tumor suppressor gene Merlin, also called schwannomy, the protein encoded by NF2 gene. It has a unique histologic pattern. The sites, most common site is limbs, followed by head and neck area. Deeper sites involved are posterior mediastinum and retroperitoneum. Other areas include posterior spinal roots, bone, GI tract, pancreas, liver, thyroid, adrenal glands and lymph nodes. Symptoms of Schwannoma Schwannoma can cause different symptoms based on where they are located. One common type of Schwannoma is a vestibular Schwannoma that grows on nerves connecting the brain and inner ear. These Schwannomas are usually benign and always present in the people with neurofibromatosis type 2. They can cause difficulties with hearing and balance. Schwannomas that grow on a nerve in arm or leg. It can cause pain, weakness, tingling, pain and needle sensation and carpal tunnel syndrome or tarsal tunnel syndrome. Schwannomas can also affect nerves in face and neck which can cause facial muscle pain or paralysis, problems in swallowing or moving an eye, and loss of sense of taste. When schwannoma grows on a nerve root which exists on spinal cord, it can cause symptoms similar to those associated with spinal problems such as herniated disc. The large nerve root schwannomas in neck or spine can cause tingling, numbness, and weakness along the length of attached nerves as well as severe pain, impaired nerve function and even paralysis. Diagnosis Certain imaging studies are useful in diagnosis. They are CT scan and MRI. MRI shows usually round or oval mass with moderately bright signal on T1 weighted images and a bright heterogeneous signal on T2 weighted images. The mass is usually less than 2.5 cm in size. The lesion enhances uniformly with gadolinium contrast. The confirmatory diagnosis is mostly done on biopsy. Grossly, it presents as a solitary mass. They have an epineurium encapsulation frequently with overlying vessels. The cut surface is pink or white. In very large masses, degenerative cyst hemorrhages or dystrophic calcification may be present. It has a well-defined fibrous capsule. Histologically, there are two distinct regions also known as biphasic pattern. There are antennae A areas and antennae B areas. Antennae A areas. These are the cellular regions with predominantly benign spindle cells in many short bundles or intersecting fascicles. They may palisadate around fibrillary processes that are called verruche bodies. They are positive for S100 staining. The cells are narrow, elongated and wavy with tapered ends interspersed with collagen fibers. Mitotic figures are rare. Antony B areas. These are much less cellular and have a background of loose connective tissue that is myxomatous in appearance. The vessel within tumor show perivascular hyalinization. The tumor may be infiltrated by many foamy histiocytes. Few histological variants of schwannoma. First is ancient schwannoma. The tumors with extensive degenerative change also known as ancient schwannoma. 
it may show mild degenerative nuclear atypia which should not be confused with malignant change second is cellular schwannoma the tumors are composed predominantly of cellular antennae a type tissue but without well formed verruca bodies and occasionally contain small foci of necrosis epithelioid schwannoma schwannoma may shows areas of epithelioid morphology and some subcutaneous examples are predominantly epithelioid type plexiform schwannoma it has a intraneural nodular pattern of growth fifth is melanotic schwannoma it is a pigmented schwann cell tumor they have a spindle cell and epithelial cell morphology often with intranuclear cytoplasmic pseudo inclusions they usually lack verruca bodies melanotic schwannomas are s100 immuno reactive but negative with gfap this tumor shows ultra structural evidence of melanosome formation and are immuno reactive for melanosome proteins such as melan a and hmb45 the other variants are microcystic schwannoma and neuroblastoma like variant immunohistochemistry the schwannomas are positive for s100 the schwannoma tumor cells show uniform strong nuclear and cytoplasmic s100 staining the other positive staining are carnitinin cd56 sox10 and gfap the tumor is negative for keratin neurofilament desmin ema and sma the differential diagnosis of schwannoma are fibroma neurofibroma neurosarcoma ganglion cyst giant cell tumor of tendon sheath lipoma malignant melanoma malignant melanotic nerve sheath tumor leiomyoma malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumor the management usually involves the surgical resection so this is in short about schwannoma and these are the references for this video hope you like it thank you bye see you in the next video